This channel contains mature subject matter, so if you're not 19 years or older, don't watch this channel. With that being said, let's get into it. Hey everyone. So today I decided I'm gonna add some red wigglers into my fabric pots. This year I have my own worm bin, so I'm gonna actually harvest my own worms from the bin. I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. I've never done it before, so you guys can come along and learn with me. If you haven't been following my channel or my worm bin videos, this is a stacking style worm bin and I just started my upper tray and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of worms in there right now so I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna collect the worms from the lower tray. Wow, if you've been following my worm bin then you can tell that the lower tray has dropped in level quite a bit and next time I add food I might just add it to the lower tray. Now I am new to worm farming so I'm just kind of digging around uh, just to see how the worms are doing and get a rough idea of how many are in the bin. There's an absolute ton of babies in this bin right now, so I'm gonna try and pick out some decent sized worms, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of babies at the same time. And I'm not sure how many worms I have at the moment, so let's head out to the greenhouse and check it out. Just take a look at these beautiful worm castings. Worms are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. I leave it out in the sun for a minute and I want to just get a rough idea of how many worms go to the bottom. And this feels really creepy. Ugh. This is a 50 gallon pot and I guess I'm kind of aiming for at least 100 worms per pot. Don't worry, I did save that worm from falling through the deck. I'm adding just a little bit of worms to each pot, one at a time, trying to evenly distribute the worms. You don't need to do anything with the worms, you don't need to worry about burying them. They'll start digging down almost immediately. Here's how small some of these baby worms are next to my finger. So it's really hard to say how many worms I actually did put into the soil. It might have been 100 per plant and it might have been 200. I felt that I didn't have enough worms the first time so I went back to the worm bin and I collected these worms as well. Worms provide many benefits to the soil. One of them is worm castings which you already know is a fantastic fertilizer for cannabis. Another one is the microbes and the bacteria that's contained in the worm's stomach. So as they consume food it continually benefits the soil. As the worms dig through the pots, they create channels and loosen the soil, which creates a better environment for the root structure. And we all know the bigger the roots, the bigger the fruits. I specifically chose red wigglers instead of European night crawlers because the red wigglers stay in the top few inches of soil. And come flower time, I like to use mineralized phosphate. This particular product from Gaia Greens is mine from petrified bat guano. I top dress my plants with this product when they go into flower to help ramp up terpene profiles and resin content. It is quite rocky and it's going to have a hard time getting down into the soil by itself. So the red wigglers are going to eat it and they're going to bring it down into the soil and down towards the roots. Typically this is what it looks like working uh, top dressing into the top of your soil before you water it in. I'm not going to be able to do that this year because I've used cover crop. So I'm going to sprinkle it over top of the cover crop and I'm going to hope that the worms uh, give me a hand helping it work through the root system and down into the soil. Now I know they say that the red wigglers only stay in the top 3 to 4 inches of soil, but I've transplanted 10 gallon pots like this which were on my deck and I've found red wigglers down at the bottom 
They've come up onto my deck and found their way into the soil all by themselves. If you found this video useful, you enjoy my channel, please hit subscribe.